Hi, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to go over creating a basic three column layout that we see and in most websites. So I just looked at a few different three column layouts over Apple, W3Schools, The Onion, and let's go ahead and create one. Right now I've got a blank page based off my XHTML 1.0 strict template. Uh, the only thing I've done is given a new title, but there's really nothing in the page at the moment. The body is empty. Instead of using an external linked style sheet, I'm going to go ahead and do some embedded styles. And I will start off right away with uh, doing a wildcard selector. Margin 0 pixels. Padding 0 pixels. This will kind of put all elements on equal footing. And it's, a, it's an easy, quick step to making your website look consistent in all the big browsers. So I'll go ahead and start off with that one. Now I'm going to do a little setup down here in the body section of the page. So there's a number of things I'm going to have to take care of. I like to start getting in the habit of always using a wrapper or container div. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with an opening div tag and I'm going to go ahead and call it ID equals wrapper. And then right before my closing body tag I'll put in a closing div tag. So this wrapper is going to contain everything on the website. This is how you can create a web page layout that is narrower um, than the full browser width, whether the full browser width is 1024, 1280, 1600, or whatnot. So we can set the wrapper to be whatever size we want, and we can even center it horizontally on the person's web browser, and then we can position elements, if necessary, within that wrapper. So go ahead and get in the habit. All sites have a wrapper. Now within this wrapper, I'm going to have a number of different sections here. I'm going to go ahead and create a uh, header section. Now after my header, I'm going to create a left column. So I will have another div here, id equals left. And then this might seem a little bit weird. Let me scroll here a bit. Um, this might seem a little weird, but I'm going to go ahead and create the right column. There we go. And then after that, I'm going to go ahead and create my center column. Excellent. So this is what we have now in the body of the page. I start off with my wrapper. It's opened. I have a header section that will be across the top. Then I'm going to have my left column, then my right column, and then my main center column, and then I have the closing div for my wrapper. And just to really keep track of this, let me go and stick a comment in here. End of wrapper. Excellent. So now we remember what that closing div is for, which could be tough later on once this page fills up with a bunch of markup. Okay, now that that's taken care of, I want to do a little bit of style so that we can really distinguish and see what's happening here. So I'm going to jump up to my style area, my embedded styles. Let's do a little work up here. Um, let's see, I'll go ahead and control my wrapper first. So, And for my wrapper, in fact, for all of these divs, I'm really going to start off just by giving them some background color so we can really distinguish them. So my wrapper, I'm going to give it a background color. And I'll just do a color name of blue. And if we want to do hex codes, let's get in that habit. Oh, there it is, 00F. And I'm going to go ahead and do a few more for each of my other elements. There we go. So now I have rules for all these various elements. My wrapper, my header, my left div, my right div, and my center div, they all have a background color. So now that I've got these in, let's see what's what the page is looking like so far. So I'll go ahead and save this, jump over to my browser. There it is, and refresh. And now we can see how things are working. There's my header, my column, my left, my right, and my center column. Now you notice, well, where is the wrapper at? Well, the wrapper is behind all of these. Remember, the wrapper has a blue background color. All of these four divs are within the wrapper, and they're taking up all the space. So you really can't see the wrapper at the moment. And in real life, you probably won't design it so the wrapper is visible. But just so that we can see that this is taking place, let me jump over to my markup for a second. I'll go to my wrapper, and there's a couple things we could do here. I could put a border on it, 
of three picks, solid and black. And what if I did a little bit of padding too? What about padding of five pixels there? So let me save that browser refresh. Now we can start to see there's the black border of the wrapper. Now I don't see my background color, so let me jump over there. And I have a typo. Background color. Got to spell that properly. Save that. Alt tab and refresh. And there, now we can see the blue background color of my wrapper in the four divs inside of it. Now divs or are block elements and they will naturally take up the full width available to them. If you want them to be less than the full width then you certainly have to indicate how much width do you want. So let me start working on and since the header is really showing up in where I want it to be let me spend a little bit more time working on the left column and the right column. So I will make my header a little bit taller so let me jump over to my code view here. I'm going to go to my header and I'm going to set in a height of about 60 pixels. Then I'm going to move down to my left column. My left column has got the red background. I'm going to set this left column width to be about 180 pixels. And I'm going to give it a little bit of height just so we can see what's happening. 300 pixels. And this part is the critical part here. I'm going to float that left column to the left. There we go. So my left column is going to be 180 pixels wide, 300 pixels tall, and float to the left. In real life, I probably really wouldn't be using height. I would let the content of the div set its height. But let me go ahead and save this back to the browser and refresh. There we go. So now we can start to see what's happening. My left column is right over here. Now, let me take care of that right column and then the center column. So back over to the code view my right column, I'll set it to be 150 pixels wide and I'm going to float it to the right. Now if you remember on the HTML side of things, it's left column, right column, center column. My left column will float to the left, my right column will float to the right and by doing that my center column will, sque will squeeze right in between those two. So for my center column I don't even need to set the width. I'll just go ahead and save what I have. Oh, Let me take care of this too. I'm going to put a height in the right column. I'll do a height of uh, another 300 pixels. Save that. Back to the browser and refresh. And here we go. So I've got my header across the top, left column, right column and my center column is right there in the middle. I'm going to make a couple little corrections to the center column that really won't stand out at first. But I'm going to go to my center column and I'm going to give it a margin left that's equivalent to the width of the left column. Now my left column is 180 pixels wide so my center column is going to have a margin left of 180 pixels. It's going to have a margin right of 150 pixels, which is the width of my right column. And I'll go ahead and set a height on here too of 300 pixels so we can really visualize this. Back over to the browser, refresh, there we go. So there is my basic three column layout. And this is actually a flexible layout. If I restore my browser here and I resize my browser, notice that my center column is expanding and contracting depending on the space available. My left column and right column are staying at fixed widths, 180 and 150 respectively. So there's a basic three column layout, header, three columns. No footer on this one, so we'll try that in the next part of this video.